Welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio, your show for all things positive, with your host, Kirk Spencer. Good morning. Welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio, part of the Freedom Talk Radio Network. I am Kirk Spencer. I am your host and your producer. Today we have a guest coming in who is very happy, very gregarious, very intelligent young man. He's by the name of Derek Lewis. He is, if you haven't read the uh, the bio on him, it's very short, but he says a lot there. Uh, he is a ghost writer, and he has now written his own book instead of just writing for everybody else. And his clients for ghostwriting have been or are International Monetary Fund, SAP, Daimler, Daimler Chrysler, Walmart, Microsoft, Disney, and the Red Cross. Quite sure he's probably got more. He just listed a few. Anyhow, he's writing a book or has written a book. is coming out fairly soon. And we're going to talk about that uh, while we wait on him to call in. Um just wanted to remind you of our new website. We've moved our website. still has the same address, www.kwave6radio.tk, but we've moved it over to uh, another host server. The reason being is that now you can actually uh, find links to... Well, our podcast that uh, we air Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, uh, you can listen to the podcast straight from our homepage. Uh, if you don't have a favorite media player, but we also have the players, uh, we use RSS feed, we have uh, iTunes, we have Stitcher, um, we also post all of our programming on YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, that's the Thoughts for Growth as well as our interviews. Unfortunately, when I was when I created the YouTube channel, uh, we had while well, I was doing my interviews on podcasts. So if you want to do our interviews or listen to our interviews, just go straight to the podcast interviews section and click on that and you can listen to any of our interviews from there. Um, our blog page uh, it's called What's New? Well, I figured that would be a good name for a blog page instead of just blog. And it gives you all the information that's going on here at K-Wave 6 Radio. And uh, it also links automatically to Facebook, our page in Facebook, K-Wave 6 Radio, radio station. That's where you find it in uh, Facebook. We also link directly to um, Twitter. And our address there is at K-Wave 6 Americas. And somebody else had K-Wave 6. They don't have a station or anything, but they've got K-Wave 6. So it's K-Wave 6 Americas and Twitter. Uh, you can find these links straight off of our website. On any page, it's on the top left-hand side. Just click on the icon for Facebook, Twitter, the RSS feed. We're also on Google+. Plus. Um, if you want to know what I look like, okay, you can click on the uh, LinkedIn uh, button there. So anyway, with all that, there's a lot more information. We also have, um, let's see, we also have, uh, let's see, an advertisers page. So if you want to advertise with us, we will... Um, we do put your ads here on the radio show, and we put them on our website so you can always access whoever our advertisers are. Uh, if you advertise with us on the shows, they do get put on the archives, and they stay there. So whatever shows you're sponsoring or advertising on, they will always be there. Um, let's see. One other thing we do have on our contact page um in well you can copy and paste your our email address into your email account or you can just click on it or you can just fill out the form 
uh, just, just a little bit lower on the page, and it will send it directly to us. There's nothing on this website that will link back to you. Uh, there is nothing that they don't want to, we don't want to copy any of your information, so your information is secure with you. Uh, if you want to uh, subscribe to our blog, it's just an RSS feed, so you don't have to sign in and be a registered member of anything or anyone. Anyway, with all that information, our guest, Derek Lewis, has called in, so welcome to the show, Derek. Hello. Uh-oh. Seems like we lost the call. Don't know why, but okay. Anyway, um, while we're waiting for Derek to come back, let's just pay our usual intro, and we'll be right back in about uh, just under two minutes. While we wait for our guests to connect, let me remind you about our Thoughts for Growth podcast. Our Thoughts for Growth episodes are three to five minute thoughts which are inspirational, motivational, and are thought provoking. K Wave 6 Radio is dedicated to bringing positive programming in all that we do. Thoughts for Growth airs on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Podomatic.com, iTunes, Stitcher.com, on our RSS feed, and on YouTube. Be sure to I'll cut that short. It seems like Derek has called back in. Good morning, Derek. You changed it, Kirk. Uh, I heard you say our guest has joined us, and then the call dropped. <laughs> <laughs> not a very not a very auspicious start to the to the call. Oh uh, well, that's okay. We'll just slide past that. We won't dwell on it. So anyway, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, now let's see. Derek, we're going to start with some questions, but first, do you have anything that you wanted to say to anyone or everybody on air? <laughs> Go ahead and put me on the the spot there. I mean, you want like a pearl of wisdom? I uh, my my life philosophy summed up in in just a, a couple of of words. Or were you oh, looking for yeah. something more uh, <laughs> more yeah. marketing ish? For those who are <laughs> just tuning in, uh, Derek and I spoke about five minutes before the show started, and he says, "I'm here. I'm not awake yet. I haven't had my cup of coffee. So have you had your coffee yet?" <laughs> It, it it hasn't hit yet. I mean, I'm slowly sipping on it as as we speak, but you know, it takes a couple of minutes before it hits the system. Okay, um, got you. Let's see. If I I guess if I could uh, if I could say anything to to anybody, uh, Kirk, especially considering that your uh, your show kind of focuses on positivity and, and encouragement. Um, one of the the biggest things that I, I come across whenever I'm speaking to uh, to potential authors and and uh, and entrepreneurs who know that they need to to put some thought content out there, they um, they tell me two things: either one is that they're not a good writer, and or they just don't have the the time. And so the thing that I say to to both of that one is that if you're if you've been in your field for any amount of time, you know, two or three years. Um, and most, you know, people that I speak to, they've been doing their profession for five or ten years. You know things that um, that that 99.9 percent .9 of the rest of the world doesn't know, and it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, whether you clean, you know, granite, whether you create, uh, you know, web pages, whatever you do, you have some real expertise. And so, the people that are looking for your knowledge, they're not. First and foremost, they're not looking for pretty words. They're not looking for poetry. What they're looking for is information. And so if you can deliver real value, and again, if you've been doing whatever you've been doing for any amount of time, you, you've you got enough value to deliver, um, then you're really doing your customers, your audience, um, your um, your potential clients an injustice by not sharing that valuable information with them just because you're afraid that you can't write pretty enough. I mean, if you you know if you're a, a literate adult, um, you can put something down, and then you can get a proofreader to you know clean it up for you and put the commas where they go. Um, 
but the the biggest thing is to just get some great content out there that people find valuable. And later on, you can worry about becoming a better writer or hiring a, an editor or a ghostwriter to make it even better. But the main thing is to just help people with the the knowledge that that you have. And if you say that you don't have enough time, you know, to to create some uh, some content to to help people. Um, whenever I'm excited about something and I'm excited about what I know I'm excited about helping people, I always seem to be able to, to find the time. I mean, last night, um, usually at a restaurant, uh, whenever I'm with my, my family, we have a no, you know, no work, no cell phone uh, policy. But uh, my wife had a pretty hard day. She was kind of zoned out. The kids were doing their own thing. So you know what? I asked the uh, the waitress for a piece of paper because I had forgotten my my hand, my trusted little notebook. And uh, so while we were kind of sitting there all zoned out, I just you know jotted down um, about eighty or ninety words for some something that I needed uh, because it was something that I was excited about. So um, you know, there's there's really there's no excuse not to put what you what you know. Uh, down in, in writing and share it with the world. Indeed. Matter of fact, there's two points that you just got through bringing out, and if you don't mind, I'd like to just kind of go over them again, which is, first of all, uh, the most important that I just liked was uh, when you're out with your family or you just have some downtime in the evening, there's no calls, no business, just family time. Yeah. Is, is another point what I'm getting at is you have a balance in your life. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I actually think about, you know, trying to achieve balance. I just I have some some rules, you know, that uh that my wife and I have, have agreed on and we've kind of set our priorities. And um in in adhering to those rules and those priorities, it automatically creates that, that balance. Mm -hmm. There you go. The second part, um, now, yeah, one of the many things that I do uh, when I have K-Wave 6 Productions is uh, I do build websites and people go, well, you know, why do I need you? And I'm going, well, there's, you know, what would you rather do? Would you rather work on your business or would you rather create a website that actually is not just putting up something and going, people will come? No, that's not the way it works. <laughs> So I said, what I need from you is just at least what you want put in there. I'll dress it up for you because I'm a freelance writer as well. Um, I, I'll dress it up for you. I'll make it sound good for you. And uh, I have other people that work for me as well. Well, I shouldn't say work for me. Work with me because we're all independents. Um, but anyway, what we do is just take your material and make it marketable, if you will. And then we dress it up, and then we put it out there for people to see, and we market it for you. But, yeah, that's what you're talking about, and uh, it, it's the point of same thing. I'm just relating it to what I do, or even what I have done, because I was doing ghostwriting, but nowhere on the level that you were doing it, uh, is taking somebody's information and making it, if you will, readable or sellable, depending on how you want to yeah. look at it. Right. As you say, get the message out. You have to jot down the information, and if you want somebody to make it better, then that's when you hire your freelance and ghostwriters. Anyway, let's get back into an introduction here, because I kind of put you on the spot, so now you can sip your coffee for a little bit here. <laughs> uh, well, you told you we we're going to have some fun on this, so... I'm going to read his bio, and then we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll continue on with the show. My guest here today, who you've already heard from, is Derek Lewis. He has worked with thought leaders in, on, from five continents on books spanning technology, leadership, and economics. His, in, his clients work with International Monetary Fund, the IMF, if you didn't know that one, SAP, SAP. Uh, Daimler, Chrysler, Walmart, Microsoft, Disney, and the Red Cross. Derek is the author of the Business Book Bible, which we're going to talk about in a little while, and the authoritative source on how to write a business book. He holds a master's in economic development and lives in Baton Rouge with his wife and two children who we were just talking about. So after we take this short commercial break for about a minute, 
We'll be right back and we'll continue our talk and conversation with Derek Lewis. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Lisa Avery and I am with Sacred Introvert Retreat Tours. Um, we're heading off to Glastonbury this May, and we hope you'll join us. So check it out, sacredintrovert.com. And I'm at K-Wave 6 Radio, and I'm feeling super honored and blessed to be here. Have a beautiful day. Are you ready to put an end to thinking about how you wish it were and take action? Take this step to find out more by going to coachingbyria.com, and you can receive your free consultation session with Coach Rhea. Coach Rhea is a certified professional life coach with a passion to help make the difference in the world. Hi, this is Al Sussman, the author of Changing Times, 101 Days That Shaped a Generation, published by Parading Press. And you're listening to the always interesting Kirk Spencer on K-Wave 6 Radio. Sometimes I really feel blushing, like I'm blushing when I hear some of those. But at any rate, welcome back to the show. Derek, um, after that introduction, let's see, where do we go from there with you? Do you want to start with something? Or? You know, the, the number one question that, that I get whenever I tell people that I'm a ghostwriter, uh, well, it's, it's, it's about 50-50. One is... Uh, does that mean that you write ghost stories? <laughs> and they've been there have been people that that they were serious whenever they asked the question. Um, and then the other question, it, well, first the answer to that is no. I don't I don't write ghost stories. Uh, the ghost just means that I'm the the I'm the, the man behind the the scenes, the uh, the pen behind the author, if you will. Definitely not the power behind the throne. Uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, right? Yeah. And then the uh, the second question is how in the world did you get into to ghostwriting? And nobody ever wakes up one morning and says, "You know what? I think I'm going to be a ghostwriter today." There's nobody goes to school for that. Nobody starts out their professional career thinking I'm going to be a, a ghostwriter. Um everybody that I've every ghostwriter I've ever met and I've met I've met dozens. We had our our first um international conference. Um this spring will be two years ago in California. Got to meet some ghostwriters from all over the world. Without exception, everybody stumbled into it by you know by accident. Either they were um, they were a journalist and they interviewed somebody for a story, and the guy said, you know, I'm I'm thinking about writing a book. Would you like to write it? Uh, they answered an ad in the uh, in the newspaper. They had a friend that said, well, you know where commas go. You think you could write a book for me? Um, I was I was no exception. So. Um, my uh, my education is in uh, business and, and economic development. I uh, got out in the job market at the very beginning of the Great Recession, and uh, things were just dead. I mean, I was competing for jobs with people who had my degree plus 20 years' experience. There was there was just no way that people were even going to look at my resume. So um, so I went to work as uh, kind of a, an in-house um, business and marketing consultant for a, a group of, of companies. Um, hated my boss, but I uh, loved my coworker. So we eventually quit, and we started a small IT company. He did the IT, um, and I did the um, the marketing. So like you, Kirk, um, he would sell the website, and then I would go in and interview them and actually do the copywriting for the website, a um, couple of other things. So you know, any any startup, um, you know, things kind of get tight, and I had uh, you know, wife and and a child and a mortgage by then. So I looked for a job um, on the side that would uh, I could kind of do a couple of different um, odd jobs, you know, here and here and there. So I answered an ad that was it was basically a, uh, for a salesman selling uh, ads for uh, for a newspaper. It's the only job I could find that let me set my own hours and that um, you know worked on um, on commission. So I, you know it wasn't like I was earning minimum wage. So yeah. whenever I went in to to sit down with the uh, the owner, it's a small uh, local newspaper, and he heard my background. He said, you know what? Forget that. This is what I want you to do. He said, I sell um, advertorials where you go 
interview uh, a local business, they buy um, a spot in, in our paper. You write uh, an article. It looks like it's a feature, you know. It looks like it's a real newspaper article, but it's it's basically an advertisement. So a story, an interview that they have paid for. So I did that um, and made you know some decent little side money and really enjoyed it. And then I said, you know, I wonder if there's anybody else that would like uh, you know somebody like this. So I went on um, went online. Don't ask me why I'd never thought to go online to look for anybody who wanted a writer before. Got on uh, Elance and, and Guru. Um, and found that, yeah, there's plenty of people. Some of them paid peanuts, but some of them actually paid decent wages. So I got on there and had some – and then I came across an ad one day at about – I don't know. It was probably three or four months into it, and uh, saw somebody that wanted a book. And I said, well, I mean, shoot, if I can write a newspaper article, surely I can write a book. I was so naive. But um, great client, great experience. Uh, fell in love with it, and then uh, so basically, I was ghostwriting before I even knew what the word was. Hmm. Yeah, actually, to be a ghostwriter, I, I was just going to ask you earlier. Ghostwriting is well, as you said, you don't go to college and go, "Hey, you got a ghostwriting class?" <laughs> there is no such thing. But. Uh, People that make speeches, politicians and whatnot, generally politicians never make their own speeches. They tell their writers what they want to say, and then the writers sit down, write it out for them, and that's why they're standing up at a podium or whatever, and they're just reading it because they know the text, but they didn't know how to put it together. Exactly. And you know what? Even um, um, JFK's uh, speechwriter, um, his name slips, slips my mind. But uh, Sorensen, was that it? Uh, anyway, JFK's main speechwriter, we are 99% sure that he was also the ghostwriter for JFK's book, Profiles and Courage. Yeah, wouldn't doubt it. Would not doubt it at all. Um, I'm not going to get into how I got started into ghostwriting because this isn't about me. Anyway, let's get back to uh, something else that you had talked about which is um, business author surveys, benefits. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So another, uh, so one of the questions that business authors have whenever they're getting ready to um, to write a book is they want to know, well, you know, what what kind of, of return on investment can I expect? <clears throat> and with with other genres of of book uh, of books, you can. You go into it expecting the the book to um, to sell so many copies to get you know so much so much money back. It's a commercial product in and of itself. Business books, on the other hand, are a completely different animal. You don't write a business book because you're hoping that it will sell um, a million copies. You write a business book as a you look at it as a marketing investment. So it's not how many books am I going to sell. But it's how many new clients am I going to get for my other products or services or consulting or training or courses or uh, thought leadership content that I sell, everything else. How many? Uh, how much is that going to sell from the fact that I have a, a book? Um, and so, you know, forgive me for, for turning the spotlight on myself for a second, but um, but my book, I mean, I was just talking to my sales coach yesterday and trying to... You know, we we're thinking just about a couple of different things, and um, you know, I said, "Well, if I could, if I could break even, I mean, I'd be happy." But for me, if I get just one new ghostwriting client from having written the book, the book will pay for itself for basically the rest of my life. So one client for me makes everything that I put into my book, all you know, any money, any time, makes it more than than worth it. That's why you write um, a business book. So there was a consulting group, uh, Wellesley Hills, I believe that uh, did a, a survey of, of 200 uh, published business authors and asked them you know, a, a series of, of questions. And the response, the overwhelming response, over 90% of the business authors reported that uh, writing their book led to a significant positive impact on their, on their business. Um, again, not from 
you know, writing the uh, the sales of the book, but from the fact that they had a book, they were able to uh, to justify raising their fees because they were seen as an expert. Um, they were able to get not only more speaking gigs, but more lucrative uh, speaking engagements. They had less trouble whenever they were selling uh, products or services to uh, to their clients. So a, a book, it, it it puts you in a whole different category than your competitors. I mean, think of it this way, okay? Think if there was the the number one conference in your in your industry, whatever it was. You wanted to be a speaker on that conference because that's that was basically the who's who in your uh, in your business circles. So you send your book to the conference organizer. So they're looking at 20 different people for one particular slot. You know, and of these 20 people, you know, they all have impressive resumes, you know, just about. Um, you know, maybe four or five of them have a, a you know, a little ebook or a little report or something that they, they put out there. But y- you are the only one that actually has a full length business book. Well, all of a sudden you've blown away the competition because you ha- you literally wrote the book on what they want to present with. So you are the, the go to guy. That's why you write a business book. That's the benefit. Well, I'm I'm still kind of chuckling because you're saying uh, you didn't want to turn uh, you didn't hopefully hopefully I didn't mind that you're turning the spotlight on you and I'm going that's what the interview is about, Derek. It's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, as a as a ghostwriter, um, a good ghostwriter, you you don't you don't talk a whole lot. You actually listen mostly, and so uh, yeah. it's kind of uh, kind of hard for me to turn around and. And be the uh, be in the the limelight because it's usually my uh, my authors who they almost forget that that I'm there. Whenever they really get into the the zone, they it's in the back of their mind that I'm there, but I don't you know interrupt. And they can talk for I mean you know for fifteen twenty minutes without me um, having to to do much at all. Mm-hmm. So uh, just just a little different for me to be on the uh, the other end, being the interviewee instead of the interviewer. I uh, don't want to make you nervous, but the spotlight and the limelight is on you, so go for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm an I'm an only child, so I can just fall back into my childhood. <laughs> Still, the attention, yeah. Gotcha. Well, we only have two minutes before we have to take another break. So tell us, uh, you're talking about uh, hard copy and digital copies, and uh, it's actually, let's come back to that one after we come back from the break. But let me ask you something. If you can summarize this in about two minutes, everybody seems to have a book these days. Now, when I was a kid, you could you, know, you would hear this in newspapers, radio, TV about who's got a new book out, and you hear all these book reviews. But everybody nowadays seems to have a book. So, how does that really work for you, or work for? people these days who are actually authoring books. So there is a big difference between having a, a book and having a good book. So anybody can, uh, you know, with a couple of dollars, they can go on Amazon, they can upload, you know, uh, they can put a couple of their blog posts together in a Word document, upload it to Amazon and say, poof, I'm an author. But whenever you, you know, you buy the book and you read it, you're like, this is this isn't a book. This this is awful. He just cut, copied and pasted a couple of blog posts together. Um, So you have credibility for just a second until somebody actually looks at your book and sees that you're really a a fraud. But whenever they open your book and it's, it's a good book, a a real book, not just, uh, you know, throwing something up there, then you still become the, then you become an expert. So it's a little harder to differentiate. Um, Having a book doesn't mean quite as much, as it uh, as it used to, but um, it's still, by and large, it is one of the best ways to establish your authority in your in your field of expertise. Cool. With that, we're going to take our second break. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with my guest Derek Lewis, the author of the business book Bible. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Batsy on Saskine Sachs of www.bat-zion.name, N-A-M-E. You're listening to K-Wave 6 Radio with Kirk Spencer. 
Hi, this is Pat Kammer, author of Lost Voice Changes You, book one. And I now have book two, which is called Hello Awesome, Message from Spirit in Pat's Patters. Buy your book from Amazon.com. <coughs> Do you get writer's block or tongue-tied when you try to write or talk? Need a wordsmith for a script, article, or research paper? Let K-Wave 6 Productions help you with all of your audio, visual, editing, and language translation needs for your business or hobby. Does the thought of creating a website give you chills? We also have webmasters to help you with all your website needs. Remember, K-Wave 6 Productions. www.kwave6productions.tk or email us at info.kwave6productions.tk. Hi, this is Duke Mayo Rockefeller. Please check out my humanitarian organization, www.livechildlive.org. You are listening to K-Wave 6 Radio with our esteemed radio host, Kirk Spencer. I'm going to end up blushing far too much. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back to our show. Today my guest is Derek Lewis, uh, the author of the business book Bible. And we left off with uh, Derek talking about, well, writing a book and uh, how to make it quality and whatnot. But let's get back into what I was starting to ask him before we took the break and I changed the question. What would be the difference between hard copy books, soft cover books, and digital books, or even e-books or audio books? Uh, well, let's see. There's a lot of ways that I can answer that uh, that question, but um, yeah, you know, probably the most relevant would be what's the difference in um, in perception. So we're really looking at a ladder of of in quality. Uh, excuse me, not in quality, a ladder of quality and impressiveness. So at the top of the ladder, the pinnacle of of impressive uh, books is having a, a hard copy. This is um, like if you, you know, bigger books or the books that have the, um, for somebody who's not familiar with the, the idea of hard copy versus soft, soft cover. So soft cover is going to be like a, like a romance novel or just kind of those paper, paperback books versus hard copy it's like a, like your textbook at school where it's got kind of the the harder um uh, outside cover that uh that can you know take a take a good beating um so for uh books having that hard cover with the the dust jacket that's really the the pinnacle of of uh of quality business books then at the bottom is going to be um a downloadable ebook with uh, a cover that you designed yourself so one of them just looks like it it took some time and some money and, and represents real quality and then at the the bottom of the scale is going to be something that you could have put together you know in about you know 45 minutes on your on your computer and uploaded it to your to your website um now in between there um are ebooks and then uh and then audiobooks and then and then soft covers so, but really, what what the difference in perception is, is how well or how much it, it looks like a a a trade book that we're used to versus um, something that you did yourself. So, for the past um, century, we have been used to uh, publishers, mostly out of uh, out of Manhattan. Um, that that put out a certain quality of book, and even if we don't understand, even if we can't pinpoint what the difference between this published book is and this self-published book is, we can often perceive the difference in, in quality. Um, the maybe the the paper is different, maybe the the words just fall on the page differently, maybe we can just tell that the cover is just kind of out of date. We just we know that there's a difference in um, in quality. So the the secret to putting out a, a book is to make it look as professional, to make it look as much as the, um, the, the, the template that we've been used to for the past 60 or 70 years as much as possible. So if you have, so the best 
the best route if you want to be impressive. And if we're talking about business books, um, you really want to impress your clients. You really want to put out something um, something that looks really good, and then you can put out different versions of, of that. So I have uh, I've gone through. Um, I didn't get a publisher for my book. One because uh, I didn't want to take the time. It can take six to eighteen months uh, from the time you actually sign with the publisher, and that doesn't include the time to actually get them. Uh, so most business authors, because they don't want to take the time, they'll use uh, Amazon or uh, or uh, Ingram Spark to do print on demand. And Ingram Spark actually has a hardcover with a dust jacket option. Um, they just they just rolled this out just a few months ago, which is exciting because up to now, um, the best that a self published author could do was a soft cover, uh, you know, a paperback. So now, I mean, we can make a book that looks just as impressive as uh, you know the the ones that are put out there by uh, traditional publishing houses. So to have that and then have different versions of that, have an ebook and have an audio book and have uh, a soft cover. Let me ask you this question, because I know about uh, audiobooks. Audiobooks are just for people that are always on the go, and they'd rather listen rather than read. But <clears throat> what would be the advantage, if there is any advantage, between having a written book on paper and an e-book? Uh, I, the reason why I'm asking is because uh, I oftentimes think about, you know, we're killing trees like crazy and kind of got that green spirit in me. So I would rather read something online. It's a little bit. It's not as much fun. I mean, I'm a traditionalist, and when it comes to reading books, give me a book. I can sit down. I can throw up in a corner, whatever. But uh, on the other side, I like to just sit back and read it on the computer, and I don't have to worry about uh, or be concerned about how many trees or you know how many trees actually went into making this book and for what reason. So what do you well, think let about me put that? Your, yeah, let me put your mind at, at risk, Kirk. The last time um, I checked, and it's been a, a couple of years, but the last time I, I checked, and this sounds crazy, but the, the supply of, um, of, of, of trees, um, basically the, the trees that were growing in, in managed forests uh, expressly for chopping down to create paper products, the supply actually – exceeded the the demand so we're actually growing more trees um than we're we're taking down to to turn into to paper now that's for the united states i don't know about for the world but uh the supply is actually outstripping demand so you don't have to worry about uh clearing old forests because we we've got too much um too much as as it is uh i don't know if uh, if the thought of that helps any uh any green um, people out there like yourself, but uh, but that is the the economics of it. Um, but let me let me tell you a story that that stuck with me. I read I don't know it's been years ago somewhere that uh, Hewlett Packard um, they they did a, a an experiment with a bunch of of, uh, of school kids. I mean I think they were you know maybe kindergarten and first grade that that age group. Brought them into a computer lab and uh, you know gave them I don't know paint or something so they could. Uh, the, the the program not the not actual paint and they created you know whatever they wanted to on the on the computer screens and then without fail once they were finished once they felt like they had created their their master their digital masterpiece they printed it out and so the the researchers they would ask the kids well why did you print it out you know why why have you know basically a piece of paper whenever it's right there and they pointed to the screen and they said because it's not real on there yeah. So even at that young of an age, there is a a perception that there is that something that is digital is ephemeral. It's it's not it's not really real. Versus whenever we have something uh, tangible, something that we can hold in our hands, then all of a sudden it's it's real. So uh, I don't have anything against uh, audio books. Um, I listen to a number of podcasts. My wife. Uh, you know, as a member of, of Audible, but there is a huge, huge difference um, between being able to, you know, whenever you're, you're talking to somebody, say, look, you know, I've got this great ebook. Let me send it to you. Or even if you have, you happen to have a printout, you know, and you hand them a bundle of papers. 
Um, well, you don't want to print stuff out. So uh, I guess that wouldn't be you. But there's a big difference between that versus pulling out of your, your briefcase or your, uh, your, your knapsack. Um, here's my book. And being able to put something tangible in their hands. Whenever they go home or whenever they're on their business trip, it's one thing. Well, let me get on my computer and let me you know open this email and download this ebook and read it on my laptop versus having something in their hands. They can get on the plane and it's right there in in their hands. Or whenever they get back to their office, they set it on their their desk. Even if they forget about it, um, it's still you know physically in in their in their office. It's not something that's lost in the uh, the files on their computer or somewhere in their inbox. Well, I understand where you're coming from, and I have that's why I said I'm more of a traditionalist when it comes down to it. Besides the fact I don't have a tablet. And I refuse to e-read off of a uh, smartphone, if you know what I mean. The screen's just too darn small. But a tablet probably would be, since they're getting to be so popular, what do you think? Because I know we're not talking about what do you, uh, we're talking about friends. So just your opinion. What do you think of the e-books going on tablets? Because uh, I work off of a laptop or I work off of a desktop, but I don't have a tablet. So... I'm not inclined to have an ebook and just sit back and go, oh, this is a really good book. I want to sit back and read it, and I have to sit upright to do it. So, what do you think? E-book. I think that, yeah, I think that we're going to get to the to the point where if you want to have a successful product, you know, even if it's a business book and it's it's basically a marketing tool. Um, I think that you're going to have to have all the different versions of your book out there. I think you have to have uh, an ebook that is is tablet friendly. I think you have to have uh, an audio book, and I think that if you really want to be impressive, you have to have at least the option for people to have a, a physical book. I mean, look, since since um, Marconi um, discovered the, uh, the 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 wireless telegraph. They've been well. It wasn't actually Marconi, but he popularized it. Anyway, they've been you know predicting the end of of books and, and newspapers, and that's been over a century ago. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we they may not be as as prevalent as as they were. We may you know send information a lot more information digitally, but books are not are not going away. But we do have to at the same time embrace the fact that technology has changed. A lot of readership has changed. There's a, there are a lot of people who they want to minimize their life. And they, they have everything on a tablet. Then on the other hand, I've got a client who he'll often he'll buy the book in audio and he'll listen to it while he's jogging or while he's uh, in, in the car or something, just kind of while he's got downtime. And then if it's a really good book, he'll go back and buy the hard copy so that he can go back and highlight it. I mean, he's uh, he's a real go-getter. No, you know, no uh, surprise that he's uh, also a multimillionaire. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, Derek, I'm going to do a little bit something different here. I'm going to take our last commercial break here real quick, and then when we come back, I'm just going to open up the mic, and you can say anything that you want to go. Just keep it positive. (laughs) Like, that's a problem. Anyway, we're going to come back and have uh, Derek Lewis just answer questions Uh, or bring up thoughts, whatever. You're actually going to give me a minute to to prepare my my thoughts. I appreciate that. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for an extra sixty seconds versus coming back and okay, Derek, it's yours. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, already experienced that from yesterday, but yeah. Two minutes to think about it, so we'll be right back. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Suzanne Perry, founder of Love Shouldn't Hurt That TV. You're listening to K-Wave 6 Radio. Hi, this is Amy Young of JSJ Phone. We are providers of junior iPhone, iPad, iPod, also Samsung, Sony, Nokia parts, and accessories, and very good quality and low prices. We sell to individuals. And the companies have three to five days delivery time by DHL or UPS. We do delivery in 24 hours after payment confirmed. For more information, see our website www.jsjphone.com. www. 
J S J P H O N E dot com. Contact me at my email mailbox. E M Y at J S J P H O N E dot com. Or by phone zero zero eight six one three four one eight six nine six three nine five. By Skype E M Y dot Y A N G. Two zero one two. Yes, honey. This is Marlo Wright of mbymarlo dot com, and you're listening to K Wave Six Radio. All right, welcome back to K-Wave 6 Radio. We have Derek Lewis, the author of the Business Book Bible. And uh, hopefully two minutes was enough for Derek to come up with whatever he wants to say. Um, we can have a conversation or you can just, you know, give your own thoughts and whatnot. Uh, and by the way, Derek, next time we have you on the show, uh, we will plan this out and we'll have more time to... Um, well, actually, first, when is your book coming out anyway? Uh, official launch is February the uh, the 3rd, so three weeks from yesterday. Cool. So let's do this. Uh, let's have you back. Uh, let's go for some time in March, and we'll um, definitely advertise your show a little bit more, or a lot more, and uh, we'll take it from there. How's that? Oh, that would be fun, Kirk. I'd love that. Sounds good. So what thoughts do you have that you want to share with our listeners today? You know, one thing that uh, we kind of glossed over that um, as as a ghostwriter, I feel like I've, I've really got to uh, take this opportunity to, to kind of write um, a misconception. A lot of people know um, – or the people who know or have heard of, of ghostwriters, the the misconception that most people or a lot of people have is that the the ghostwriter writes the the book and then the author gets all the the credit. So um, and that's that's just just not how how it is at all. Not professional ghostwriting. You can you can hire a hack um, to to do that for you. But uh, but professional ghostwriting, it's really about collaboration. So the way that I work with with my authors is, um, you know, I mean, I, I've I've ghostwritten books on uh, you know, um, data analytics. I've ghostwritten books on uh, change management, leadership. And Kirk, that's not my background. I don't know anything about that. But I don't have to because I'm not the the author. I just translate their ideas and their thoughts, their words, their stories, their tone. They're everything. I translate that into a book. So I write the book that they would have written if they were an expert writer in addition to being the expert in, in their field. That's what good ghostwriting is, is really about. Um, so in in that, uh, I've, I've been the, – the, the way that I got into specifically business ghostwriting is because that's really what I, I believe in. That's really kind of my um, – well, I, I, I hate for it to sound corny, but that's really my passion. I mean uh, I went into economic development because I truly believe that people doing better is one of the best ways – to promote a better quality of, of life. I mean, in, in countries, whenever uh, the median income gets above, I think it's like 2,500 US dollars, the median household income, once it rises above, and I think that's the right number, 2,500 US dollars, the, um, the likelihood that that country is going to experience civil war or that it's going to experience um, you know, huge political uh, change or some of these other, just these awful national tragedies, the likelihood that that's going to happen drops tremendously. So I see people, you know, doing business, people being able to, you know, make a living for them and and their families as a, really as a way to to make the the world better. So that's why I I really enjoyed business and that's why um 
whenever I got into ghostwriting, I specifically went with business ghostwriting because it's something that I, I really believe in. So I get to have a great time every day and believe that in the long term that my books are – excuse me, my the books that I, I ghostwrite with my authors, um, our works, are going to – they're going to help people in the, in the long run and help them lead uh, – help them lead better better lives. So for that reason, I know that I, I, I can only work with a handful of, of authors a year. Um I'm I'm really good at what I do and I charge uh I charge a lot of money. And so I know that uh, there's a lot of business authors. They just can't justify the cost of working with uh, a ghostwriter like me. And so, just like at the beginning of the call, you asked if I could, uh, if I could, you know, say anything, share anything with with your listeners. What would it be? And I encourage them to share their expertise with the world. So that's what I've done with with my book, the business book, taken what um, I've learned in the in years of, of ghostwriting business books. And uh, and put it all in in a book. So the book is not it's not an ad uh, for me, although that's the that's kind of the the secondary motivation. But first and foremost, I want people to be able to uh, read the business book Bible. I want them to be able to get a good idea of what a good business book is, and I want them to be able to use it to uh, put their thoughts into into words and create books that help other business uh, owners, business professionals, business leaders, so that they can in turn turn around and do better with their business and hopefully um, help everybody lead just lead better lives. I know that that sounds a little, you know, pie in the sky, a little touchy feely, but that's uh, that's really where I'm I'm coming from. Actually, something that you mentioned and you kind of let it slide by, and I'm probably going to have on at least two more times now is what you said you went to get your master's in which is economics and to help people better their lives because uh, to somewhat paraphrase well the paraphrase quote you is uh, you got into it because you want to help people better their lives financially because you said once their income gets over twenty five hundred dollars I don't know if you're talking about a month or a year, but uh, their chances of having a war or other uh, problems in their countries diminishes greatly. So that's going to be a topic I definitely want to get you back for, and we can talk more about that later. As a matter of fact, just as an apology for uh, this interview, I think Derek's doing fine. I think I'm doing lousy, but eh, maybe you agree. Anyway. Uh, is that uh, I had a couple of people that I was trying to get on the show and both of them backed out. So it was a quick thing to get Derek on here from yesterday. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to uh, speak with him and research with Derek. So please pardon us because this show was kind of an impromptu thing. But anyhow, next time we have Derek on, we will have a lot more to talk about and... um, yeah, it'll be a lot more fun. So anyway, Derek. Yeah, well, for whatever it counts, I'm having a good time. Oh, good. And that's uh, so, that's really what it, it's all about. I was on a um, I was on a, a podcast a couple of months ago, and uh, at the very end, they said, "Well, if you if you could have your last tweet, uh, you were the you were going to Mars. Um, you'd never be heard from again." And uh, you had one tweet to share with the the world. What would it be? And it took me a second, um, but one of my favorite quotes is actually by Groucho Marx, of all people. And it says, if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I liked one that builds off of that. If, uh, who's uh, Now I forgot exactly who it was. Oh, it's Confucius. Find work that you enjoy doing, and then you will or find something that you enjoy doing. Then you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is well, like you said, this is something that excites me. Put it that way. I enjoy what I do. You enjoy what you do. I enjoy writing. I just never went to the way to the to the extent that you do. Well, back when I started writing, the internet was very new. Um, matter of fact, uh, the one ghost story I did that I still remember, it was kind of funny because it was a guy that, uh, 
he was at that time, he's now passed, but he was doing work over in Europe, I believe it was. He came back to the United States. Somebody heard about him over in Toronto, Canada. I was living in Chicago, uh, yeah, I'm in Chicago at the time. And um, he came running in real quick and he says, can you write a story for me real quick? It has to be done within an hour. They're going to press with it. So I said, fine, sit down, tell me the information. Wrote it out for them, you know, doctored it up, cleaned it up for them, and they sent it out. They had to do it by fax back then because the Internet, like I said, was still new and email was not something everybody used, if if it existed at that time at all. Anyhow, so typed it up on a computer, printed it out, and that was just when you had printers that uh what were they the dot matrix printers and that the was dot the matrix thing. yeah yeah that was the only thing. <laughs> wow old school <laughs> yeah very old school <laughs> so it got published and everybody loved it including him and the paper and so i said well not bad for an hour's work <laughs> but anyhow uh, grace under pressure right yeah, well, I don't get under pressure. He was the one who was under pressure. He's like, okay, fine, I'll sit down. <laughs> well, you, know how it is. you cannot really work as a writer if you're pressured and do your best. You can do good, but you can't do your best. Yeah, yeah, you've got to let things. You know what? You you actually you, you hit on something that's that's really important. One of the one of the big differences in the way that I ghostwrite versus other people. Um. Whenever my authors come to me, they've been uh, they've been in business for ten or, or twenty years, and uh, what we're really, I guess, what I'm really talking about, what you alluded to, um, Kirk, whether you meant to or not, was that we have to let our subconscious work on on things. We have to, you know, f- have some input, and then we have to sleep on it. We have to let it stew in the back of our mind, and our subconscious works on, you know, some of these ideas. So for some of for some people. Their subconscious has been working on uh, some of their thoughts and experiences and insights for for years. So what my job is as a ghostwriter and what you're talking about, a writer not being able to do their best in, in an hour, is that we have to let that happen, let, that, let our subconscious work on it. And then we have to work to pull that out of our uh, out of our subconscious into our conscious mind so that we can see what our – uh, and I don't, you know, mean a joke whenever I say this, but what our our brilliance has has created. That's, you know, you, people talk about the muse. They talk about having, you know, uh, a spark of, of inspiration. They talk about creativity. All of that is really just reaching into your subconscious to to work on. Uh, I mean, to pull out what's been going on in in those dark corners of of your mind that you don't usually uh, shine a light on. And bringing that out and putting that on on paper, that's really where uh, my author's books come from. That's where writer's inspiration comes from. It all happens back there. But that can't happen, one, without time, and two, without delicately and and, and gently bringing it to the fore. Indeed. Well, with that, we're going to have to come to a close on the show. I knew I should have booked the show for an hour and a half. But... Thing about this is is that in uh, February and March we're going to have Derek back. So uh, Derek, you're going to do two more shows with us. I'd love to. Beautiful. With that, where I just want to thank you for being here, especially on a short notice. And we'll be in touch with you. And everyone, you want to be a part of our next shows? Stay tuned. Watch our blog, and we'll leave you with more information. Until then, take care and be well. As we close today's show, we at K-Wave 6 Radio thank you for being with us today. Also, we ask that you follow our blog, Twitter, and Facebook links, and our Thoughts for Growth podcast episodes, which air on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern. Links to follow us and to our media players can be found at www. Dot kwave6 that's the number 6 radio.tk again that's kwave6radio.tk or www.kwave6radio.weebly.com check out what's happening at freedom talk radio and SETV 
by visiting their site at www.freedomtalkradio.net. And as always, all the best. <laughs>